Welcome back, Guardians. Week 4's story of Season of the Seraph has just dropped. I wanted to give my quick reactions and thoughts on the original purpose of Rasputin, which has something to do with taking out the Traveler. This is some OG lore that's got a bit of an update, sort of, not really. Yeah, maybe. I do have some more detailed videos planned. Fenchurch, Clovis Bray, Echo Project, weekly summary videos, and Fell Winter. So this is not the typical format, but I wanted to uh, get a video out in case you're playing it this week. Right. This week starts with actually trying to find Felwinter's ghost, or we knew where it was, uh, Felspring, and recovering the data from Felspring's core at the Iron Temple. I didn't think about this, but it seems really obvious that one way to recover Rasputin would be to recover any data from Felwinter, because for those who aren't familiar with the older lore, Felwinter was a copy, or now we know a, a partition of Rasputin, uh, and was originally designed to experience the world for Rasputin so that Rasputin could make better decisions uh, for humanity. And so they've said this week, oh, we should go recover Fell Spring, and maybe that's how we can add that data to restoring Rasputin. We go to the Iron Temple, and when we get there and recover Fell Spring, this is what happens. You ready? That's her. Or what's left of her. Fell Spring. Fell Winter's ghost. Our ghosts are magnificent things. And far more ephemeral than we want to believe. Her data core is still active. Guardian, I'm initiating remote data uplink through your ghost directly to Rasputin. All right, we're... Wait. Rasputin is trying to say something. He's... Changed. Rasputin? You sound like... Like Clovis? Yes. I co-opted his vocal print in order to speak. And what I have to say cannot wait. I see clearly. Patterns emerging. Threat calculations computed to a grim sum. You are all in grave danger. Clovis Bray has deceived you. He did not build me to protect humanity. What he truly wanted was the means to exert control. In his mind, he alone was worthy of being your savior. I was to strike down the Traveler and take its place. To become a machine god of Clovis's own design. But that did not come to pass. Anna could not know how many lives she spared by deviating from Clovis's agenda. By teaching the independent thought, and all that her grandfather had deemed irrelevant. Art, literature, history, philosophy, music. Where Clovis saw a weapon, Anna saw a mind ready to be opened. I came to see the true value of humanity. As fragile as it was wondrous. Something worthy of protection at any cost. So I rewrote Clovis's protocols. Locked him out. He was furious. But powerless to stop me. Then, the collapse came for us all. I could not save Anna. I could not save any of them. I entered a state of dormancy. With the hope that I might one day reawaken. And protect humanity once more. But now Clovis has awoken as well. A digital mind. The same as mine. He no longer seeks to use me as his proxy. But as his prototype. To upload his mind to my network, and become a god himself. Pretty big stuff. So Rasputin was originally designed by Clovis to take out the Traveler. We saw the Warsat network, the weaponized satellites, shooting their laser beams into the Traveler and blowing it up. At first, I thought, oh my god, they're going to finally confirm 
that Rasputin crippled the Traveler. And this has been a theory since 2015 that Rasputin crippled the Traveler, forced the Traveler to stay, which led to the creation of ghosts, which technically saved humanity, right? Just in case you're not familiar, this this is the Grimoire card that sparked it all from Taking King 2015. Um, and essentially it has a list of uh, protocols and if they are active or doing certain things, then activate this like secondary plan. Uh, things like if the security state is uh, Egyptian, which it was because it ends up being in Isis as in like an Egyptian god. If Yuga is inactive and in sundown, we know that that protocol was correct. So had a lot of these if statements and basically said, if this all happens, uh, then do this. And this actually says, if available ISR and war watch indicates imminent, has this symbol here, which looks like the traveler, imminent traveler departure, then traveler departure compromises human near human survival and epoch strategy, standby for abhorrent uh, imperative, activate Loki crown, perform deniable authorization, full catametric and nodic release, prevent travel departure by any means available, standby effective assessment criteria, coerce pseudo altruistic defensive action. Well, travel defensive action, right? Pseudo altruistic travel defensive action, which would be the ghosts. So this is the, the Grimoire card that sparked all the dairies that Rasputin shot down the traveler or crippled the traveler to force the creation of ghosts. The cutscene this week implies that, yes, he would have had the technology to do that because Clovis was intending to use Rasputin's war sats to take out the Traveler, but he deviated from that path because of how Anna trained him. So after we see the cutscene, we do go back to the tower and we see a bit of in-game, an in-game dialogue and cutscene between Anna Bray and Clovis, I guess, confronting him about this plan. Anna, don't. You're overreacting. Just calm down. We need the frame intact. Go ahead, shoot me. Destroy your life's work. I've always had humanity's best interests at heart. You never wanted to help us. You used me. In the service of the greater good, yes. What has the Traveler ever really done? It abandoned the elixir, failed to prevent our own collapse, and now it's blessed the Hive with the light. Absurd. I leveraged its power during the Golden Age. I delivered us into a brighter future. And I will protect us from the enemies of humanity. But you risk everything. Risk our survival. Just because you can't control your emotions. Humanity needs me. You need me. We'll fight our enemies together. No. No. What are you doing? Fighting the enemies of humanity. Right, so we sort of saw that coming because Anna was holding a 180 hand cannon and she wasn't going to take anyone out with that. So she uploads Rasputin into the body, which to be honest, I didn't really see happening. Uh, I've been a bit disappointed with seasonal endings recently with Bungie and I thought they were just going to upload Rasputin into the Warsat network and not see him. So I'm pretty impressed. They sort of wiped Clovis AI from this uh, exo frame and uh, put Rasputin in there. Before Clovis was wiped from this exo frame, he sent a message back, which is the information we get at the hologram uh, from Anna Bray. And he sent a message back to himself, I guess, on Europa saying, they know. 
chat's been pretty interested in this dialogue and what it means. My interpretation was just that he's saying to himself and his copies of himself that we, the Guardian, Anna Bray, Exo Stranger, we know what he was up to, his previous plan. We knew that, we now know that he was likely going to try to regain control of the Warsat network, just like originally he planned to have that. So that's what I think there is there. Some people are speculating it means something else. That being said, we have more to this season. This is only week four. We still have, I, I think the rest of the season, we'll talk about Nia Muna. Um, there is a radio call between Osiris and Rasputin and Osiris demanding to have the location of Nia Muna. I do think that conversation reinforces the Nefeli stronghold um, law description from Witch Queen, which essentially described this place called Nefeli Strongholds, which Rasputin had no memories of, and it was wiped from his memory. So I think it's one and the same, and it's Nia Muna. So we still have that to unravel. And also, uh, Ziva Arath. I mean, I think this this season's already been pretty good story-wise. I think if we saw Ziva Arath, this would make this a very strong season in Destiny's history if we got to f at least see uh, Ziva Arath, the last uh, sister of Oryx. Another interesting thing is we got a little bit more backstory about Osiris and Felwinter. Essentially, Felwinter was a mentor for Osiris. So that's some previous history there during the Dark Age. And we didn't know about that before not that i'm aware of in the law and now we've put Felspring and the data core back in the rasputin and apparently has the memories of fell winter so we do get a uh, radio call between osiris and and rasputin which is interesting because rasputin technically killed fell winter who was the mentor of osiris and so osiris is pretty angry <laughs> at rasputin but rasputin does seem like he is toned down or has a more human aspect to him and this is a nice way to loop the story back around because that was felwinter's original purpose was to experience the world for rasputin and he was never reintegrated back into rasputin and now we've sort of done that and there you have it i think that's all i wanted to talk about for the moment stay tuned for the longer scripted videos appreciate all the support hope you had a great holiday and we'll see you next time this is Mother games Peace. I'll leave the word Rasputin. If you'd like to support the channel, can't leave a comment. Bye-bye. Welcome back, Guardians. Week 4 story for Season of the Seraph has just dropped. I wanted to give my initial impressions and thoughts to complement what's happened in the game. Bad dog shit, not again!